Hello everybody, welcome to the tutorial for how to use the Omnic Lab spreadsheet for season four. I'm Rob May from Omnic Lab and in front of you, you are seeing the hard work of many of our admin and moderators in the Discord for Omnic Lab podcast. This is a spreadsheet that I personally have been loving a variant of this that I've been using and talking about on the show a little bit for season three, but we had a lot of improvements that you will see and I can explain how to use this and it is available to you above me here. You can see the uh, link to our Discord. You can go there and click the links channel and check the pins or you can go to the announcements and check the pins. And if you don't know what to do, you can just type in exclamation point spreadsheet and hit enter and it'll show up and you can get it or you can ask and we'll get it to you. So. I say all that to say this is how you can track legitimized stats throughout your season and um, if you can monitor it. So let's start with the first thing. First thing you want to pay attention to is here. So right here you can see that we have dates. Okay, um, The dates is going to help you monitor how well you're doing per session. You can kind of highlight them and see how you do in the session. Okay, There are two tabs down at the bottom. This is the second tab, which you will see in a little while. But the first tab, we'll start with dates. Then you have time period. This will give you uh, to see if you're able to utilize off hours versus on hours in your specific time zone. So what I would do first is honestly go to this time period tab and maybe even edit this to just say like, for me, I'm in Japan time. So I would go and make some parentheses and then do JST. Or you can do GMT with whatever number you'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and change my spreadsheet here. Now the spreadsheet is going to be a template that you're going to have to go up to file and go to make copy. And then you have this on your drive and save it with this um, and then organize it with this little button up here. You can star it and then put it in a folder. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is we're going to figure out basically what you do at this whole sheet does everything for you when you play. So let's say um, this line represents when your placements finish. So you may need to enter um, these a little bit differently in your placements than you would otherwise. So let's go on and assume that you got placed after your placement games at rank, let's say 1900. So you're really close to bronze, right? So you put what your placement is here and it automatically updates your starting SR, which is this column, um, at 1900. And it says your win percentage is zero, but this should be changed by your um, plus minus, okay? So hopefully this will make sense here in a second. But basically, all you're gonna do is you click this right here. Let's say today's date right now is at the, this, this is, 227 okay so that's pretty easy and then my time period right now is seven o'clock so I find this six to nine and then I go with the map okay so we matched up we go to Hanamura all right so we're on Hanamura and it's not a cough map so you don't have to fill out this and let's say we well it's cough right so you draw so the score was one to one and your ending SR is obviously the same. So you start out at 1900. And then if you go over here, let's say I was duo queuing. So this is team group average or season. Team average. I believe this is going to be what the rating is at the beginning of the screen when you do the game. So the way I do this is I'll have plays.tv just record in the background all of my games you can set it for like the super lowest quality it'll never like overload your computer even when i was playing with a laptop it was doing fine so just keep that in mind so download plays.tv just open up the system and go and check the game so let's say our average team rating was about 2300 and our opponents were at like 2340 okay so they had the slight advantage Obviously, our, um, here is going to be your, gr or this is team average, sorry, team average and opponent average. So when you look at this spreadsheet, you need to pay attention to this column. 
because that's going to be what you see below. Everything at the top here under these two rows is going to be additional information that is completely automatically filled in for you for you to check. And it will automatically update after every game. So then here you can see, okay, so solo queue, duo queue, trio. Let's say we duoed. Season uh, attack hero. So we are on attack. I played Ana. And then I didn't switch at all. So I don't have to fill out either of these. But if you did, let's say you played Ana and you're like, hey, I think we could have done better if I switched to Genji. And then I switched to Bastion because we're poking the choke and we couldn't get it. And then on de defense, I wanted to play Symmetra because it was a good idea. We lost point one, So then I swapped and I started playing Ana again. And then we were having some issues. And towards the end, I played D.Va for a stall. Okay. Now, if you keep scrolling over here, they'll have additional columns for Koth maps. So if you do Koth, for whatever reason, um, we want to categorize those separately because Koth maps kind of abide by separate rules, which you'll see here in a second, um, where you can put your heroes for Koth here. Because there's no attack or defense, you put the Koth there. Okay, that's why Koth is separate for the hero section. And then you have an expandable column for notes. You say, look, I played really well this match, even though we lost, or whatever. You, you can put whatever you want here. Okay? So now I'll show you how to use Koth. All right, so let's say we go to a Koth map next. Let's say we play everyone's favorite, Li Jing Tower. All right, so then under Koth map, you will now actually ignore everything under Koth map for now. And the win loss, you will also ignore for now. And the score, you will also ignore for now, as well as the SR, okay? So then you move over to here. Then you will have team average. So you can fill this out. So again, we have the same group rating because we didn't win or lose. And the team rating below us is actually 2285. So these guys are favored. We're still in our duo queue. So we can stay with that. All right, so now you go under this column here. And you choose... Li Zhang Garden, and then we have Control Center, and let's say we go back to Market, and then we go back to Control Center, and then we go back to Garden. So that's all, this is a full five Koth map, and that means it's obviously a three to two. So you're basically gonna be entering these almost every round. So these are always gonna be 1 0 on these, so you actually don't need to follow any of these uh, score formats for this column. All right, so it's a little complicated. You can expand these if you'd like, which I will pretty much almost always do. All right, so let's do that so that we have the expanded column pretty easily viewable here. All right, so we have these. So let's say under Garden, we won the first one, we lost the next two, and then we won the next two, and we end up winning the match. Yay! So then you go up to here. And you say, okay, so under Lee Jong, I picked a win because the 3 2 score was two losses, three wins under this. Now, the cool thing about this is if you don't fill out this column under map, it will give you only credit for this column and this column under a conditional formatting thing. It's a little bit of confusing, but basically, if you do that, It'll only register one win. It won't register like win, loss, loss, win, win under your final results. Okay. So let's say we won. We gain 24 SR. So we go up. All right. Now, this is where the cough gets interesting. So it's not ideal. And if you don't want to track, the great thing about this spreadsheet is if you don't want to track anything that we're showing you, you don't have to. So you can go under, like, let's say, first round you played Ana, next round you play May, third round you play May again, and then fifth round you play, you know, Soldier. So you don't want to play it per round. You just play whatever heroes you did. So if you play more than three heroes, you're kind of stuck. But in reality, if you're playing a Koth map and you're switching that many times, we're theorizing that it's a generally not a good idea. So we kind of want to stick around three, Okay. So that's how we'll finish up here. That's the gist of how you use this. Again, we're under the same time zone, and you can just copy and paste this part. This is why I suggested doing plays.tv, because it's a lot easier, okay? 
Now, let's jump back to the season counts. So what you're going to see here is you're going to see some live stats that are updated from the previous spreadsheet that you're filling out. So right here, you're going to see under column three, we have Hanamura. You have one game and you lost. But if you go down here to Li Zhang, you won your one games. You have a 100% win rate. So you can see the value in this the later. Then you can even track different stuff like what is my win percentage with duo queue versus solo queue? What roles do I play the most often? And if I win, or sorry, what game, how many games did I play under each role? How many wins did I get? And what's my win percentage with each role? Then you can take the same color code of the roles over here to offense, defense, tank, and support, and see how you do with individual heroes beyond just the role. Furthermore, you can see, again, instead of having nuanced individual games under Escort Assault, Hybrid, and Control, you can see what game modes that you get stuck on versus which ones you succeed on, and then what your outcome count is going to be. So the outcome count has to do with how many games you're winning inside of the Koth map. So this will let you see your win percentage per map. So that's why we individually fill those out. Now again, you don't have to fill out any of the individual scores if you don't want to. It's completely extra. So you can freeze those columns and never use them. Okay, now the difference is going to be, um, if that that's gonna be the biggest difference I think for a lot of our users. I know that I didn't do this personally, but you that makes basically makes all of this information here you just don't need it. You say, I don't need this information. I don't want to track it. I don't really care. Great. Don't use it. But then here, you're going to gather this information like I got so much on Li Zhang versus Nepal. Okay, so this is just nuancing your Koth maps because Koth is... Uh, I don't know why, but I guess you're going to see those stats twice like here and there so that if you scroll down, you can still see the comparative charts. Okay. And then you're going to see how well you did on Koth maps with heroes down here for specific Koth maps. I don't know why, but Koth maps tend to be where a lot of people get hung up on swapping heroes. So maybe this is useful to you. But that is the gist, okay? And then the last thing that I'm going to highlight is the top part. Man, I don't know how long I've been doing this, but this is a pretty long video. So I'll wrap it up. Basically, you're going to see where you placed, how many games you played, your total wins, total losses, total draws. But we have another column for you. You can say in the win-loss column, if you have a draw, a win, a loss, or a forfeit, which means the opponents had disconnect or they just all quit, and a disconnect. So this will help you identify how many disconnects you have in a season. So if you have a disconnect here, let's say you had a disconnect on Dorado. That means the score would be something like irrelevant and, you know, whatever. And you had, yeah. So anyways, that, that kind of shows you, you have one disconnect now. And then you have your win percentage. You can read most of these, but you can even see what your average team group rating is and the enemy rating, as well as what your season high, your season lows are your season average. This is the one thing that I am going to be paying the most attention to because this is what the, the spreadsheet will help you find as your kind of your pseudo MMR hidden matchmaking rating. And that might be really good. And then you can even see what the average SR you're gaining and at what average SR you're losing in these two spots. You can even see how long you've won in streaks and how many losses you've gotten in a streak as well. So these are just a lot of really helpful information that you're going to be gaining that you're not going to find on maybe Master Overwatch or Overbuff. And we want to give those to you. And also, a little punch uh, that we're going to get out of this is we have a couple guys that are working on some web development to make this into something much better and hopefully more mobile friendly. Maybe we can get an app, but the more people we have entering this data um, and actually wanting to give it to our mods and admins, we might be able to turn this into kind of a Omnic Lab community spotlight and see, hey, how are we doing? Are we progressing? Are we declining? Where can we improve? And we can talk about the spreadsheet if this is what you're interested in. So this is just another tool to give you as Omnic Lab residents and scientists, uh, we hope that you enjoy this. But 
Um, just let me know what you think, and I'll, uh, if I need to, I can do a Cliff Notes version of this, and I'll just show you how to use it, and uh, not explain all the other little things, but I think that this detailed guide is going to be a little longer, but a little bit more helpful to you if you want to use it in depth, okay? This is Rob, and that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time.